Hi GQ, I'm Ethan Ewing, professional surfer, and I'm going to hit replay on my best waves from the 2022 WSL season. Here comes one of the best styles in the game, Ethan Ewing. The man from Stratty's on a roll so far. Continues with the smooth rail work. So this wave at Pipeline was my first hit of the season, first wave of the season. I just remember kind of getting to Hawaii early because pipe's kind of not my strength so I wanted to get as much time as I could out there and that was definitely I think the biggest I've surfed in the comp so I was pretty nervous going out there. I think there in Chopu is probably the scariest waves that we surf on the tour. I was working with Shane Dorian in that event and he knows the wave so well and we had like a good lineup. I was in the spot I wanted to be and that wave came through and at pipe you have to paddle so hard like once you decide you go on this wave you have to kind of be all in and just go 100% commitment. I just remember getting like a good paddle in and kind of just dropping in and kind of being really deep. And like you see on the, the water angle, I was kind of like almost fell off halfway through, almost went too high on the wall. And that bumped me back down. But yeah, that was, I think my best way of a pipeline. And it's a huge confidence booster for the rest of the season. Being committed at pipeline is easier said than done. I'll talk about committed. Straight from wow. the buzzer, Ethan Ewing. Nice one, really deep there. This wave at sunset, I was coming up against Felipe Toledo, who got second in the season before. And I had a, like a good heat, and it came down to maybe like a minute and a half to go, and Felipe was in the lead. He had some really good scores too. And so I was just waiting at the back. I had priority, and I was just hoping for one last opportunity to get a, a good score and go to the lead. Got that wave. I kind of like sat a little bit off my peak, and I was just hoping for it to come, and it came through, and I kind of, in that moment, I kind of knew like, this is it, this is my opportunity. Took off and kind of all just went kind of blank. I went into autopilot mode and got the score. And it was probably one of my best moments of the season, I think. Ethan Ewing in the barrel, traveling through comes up, no problem. Ewing, long bottom turn and hooking combo. So barrel and a couple of turns for the young man from North Stradbroke Island. This wave at Bells Beach was the quarterfinal against Owen Wright. Owen and I have had like a lot of heats together over the years and it's not like a rivalry, but we've kind of been really competitive against each other. So at the start of this heat, we were like paddling way up the point and like didn't want to give up the inside to each other. And I finally like got the inside and a wave came through and I kind of just held him off and I took off right at the last second on this wave. And I was a little bit deep. That's why at the start I was kind of took my time to get around, but ended up getting a pretty good score. And I think on that wave, I was like really trying to focus on my variety almost, like just kind of doing different turns and I'm getting a pretty good score and beating Owen and getting into the semis. As we have a look at Ethan on the replay. Whoa, hopping over that uh, grindy little section around again, just slicing and filleting this wave to pieces. Another roundhouse hook right back up into the power source. So this wave at Margie's um, was in a quarterfinal against Nat Young. Who was, who was ripping the whole event. He was getting big scores and his back end out there is probably one of the best, I think. So on this wave, I was kind of really focused on getting my bottom turn right because the waves, the face is super flat. So you kind of want to make the most of the steep part of the wave. So I remember just on this wave, my first section, I was like really trying to get my bottom turn right. And I think that was probably my best first turn of the, the event. It kind of goes flat in this wave like through the middle and then the end section's super hard to hit because the waves kind of like come together a bit and it's super hard to ride out. So I remember kind of hitting that and I didn't think I was going to make it, but it kind of like pushed me out into the flats, like onto the reef. But yeah, I think that was my best way over Margie's that season. Here we go, Ethan Ewing, the surfer from Stradbroke Island over there on the East Coast. The Queenslander driving through that first carve. Again, just gliding through another beautiful rail turn. And he's been so strong with the big finishes throughout the contest so far and gets another one there. Yeah, so this wave at G-Land, um, it was my first time to G-Land, so I didn't know the wave at all. I was there with my brother. And the way this wave worked out was, my brother was coaching me in the event, so he's like, gotta get on the inside, because I was with, I was in the heat with Geordie Smith and Jadson Andre. He's like, you gotta get on the inside, like get the first wave. And I was like, kind of on the outside of them and trying to get like on the inside. And just as I got on the inside, that wave kind of came through and I got it. But as I knew, it was my first kind of time there. So I didn't know the wave at all. So I was just kind of just <laughs> surfing as the wave came. And my first section, I kind of mistimed a little bit. 
kind of almost went off the back a bit, but then I kind of like regathered, and the second turn was pretty good too. And then I kind of came into that third section, and I didn't know what I was doing really. <laughs> I was just like kick stalled and it kind of barreled, and it ended up kind of being pretty long, but yeah, I did not know about that wave at all. And I kind of just, I don't know, <laughs> just kind of went with it. This wave at J-Bay was uh, against Yago Dora in the semi-finals. Yago was surfing so good in this event, um, doing some crazy backhand surfing. And my previous heat before with Geordie Smith, I kind of had a bit of a shock and made like a lot of mistakes. So I remember just going into this heat, just kind of almost resetting and just thinking, let's just reset, get the inside and try and try and get a good first wave and kind of, I don't know, get the rhythm back. So. This wave was kind of probably my favourite wave of J-Bay, I'd say. Just with how I felt on the wave, I just felt kind of really in rhythm. My manoeuvres kind of felt pretty good too. So yeah, I felt like a really important wave during my competition in J-Bay. Um, and then I think this wave, Yago kind of came back in the heat, but yeah, this wave kind of gave me a lot of confidence, especially going to the final, beating Yago and then going up against Jack. Ethan Ewing is going to break through and get his first championship to a win here at stop number nine, the Corona Open J Bay. And what a final it was. Have a look at the numbers for these two competitors. Jack Robinson refused to give up. He had excellent scores of his own. Yeah, this wave in Tahiti, um, I was up against Michelle Perez, who's a local there. And this heat was, I don't know, felt like a lot of pressure just because it was the last event of the, the regular season and everyone was talking about the top five and the rankings and everything. But going to this heat, I was super nervous because Michelle Perez is the local there and crazy good surfer out there, Chargers. So my first heat, I was up against Cowley Vast, who's another local there, and I had an absolute shock. I had like, total of two so I was like kind of just pretty angry so I just went into this heat kind of I don't know had some fire in me I felt like so anyway it was like a minute and a half to go Michelle was in the lead he had an eight I think um, and I needed like a five or something and Tahiti's really hard wave really hard lineup to kind of I don't know master there's kind of two different takeoff zones you can do it's like the west bowl which kind of comes in at a different angle and it's really hard to kind of, I don't know, be in both zones. You kind of have to choose one or the other. I was working with Owen Wright. He was my, he was coaching me there, and he knows the wave really well. So I was, he was in the channel, and this it was a minute and a half to go, and this wave came, and I was like, this is it. But I didn't know the lineup too well, so I was kind of not sure if I was in the right spot or not. And yeah, kind of got a good entry in, and I was really deep, but it, I don't know, just the, the way I paddled in on, kind of on an angle, it gave me, gave me good momentum towards the channel, came up over the foam ball, and right at the end I was like so close to coming off, I was like almost over my board, about to like dive forward, I just like held on, held on, and just spat me out. Um, I knew I had the score, I only had the five, but I was like, just claimed it, I don't, <laughs> don't usually claim, but I was just like, it felt so good. I wasn't trying to sell it. I was just like so happy to finally get a good wave out there and especially against a local who knows the wave so well. It was a huge confidence booster to, to kind of get over someone that um, knows the wave really well and better than me. It was really fun working with Oakley on the Be Who You Are clip. Came to my home and showed them around where I grew up and Oakley been supporting me since I was I think 15 so just to be a part of the brand and just kind of show where I come from and my family and kind of my story. It's been, it's been really fun and kind of, I don't know, a bit different to my competitive side, which kind of constantly traveling and going to the next event and stuff. It was good to kind of switch off and just chill out a bit. Here we go, Ethan Ewing, the surfer from Stradbroke Island. Driving into that first big turn for Ewing. Huge slash to kick things off. Standing up, draws off the bottom, straight into a beautiful hook, a huge finish, and absolutely drives a nail into the end section. That's a wrap. See you later, GQ.